What is up, you guys? Welcome back. Hope you're all having a great day out there. I just wanted to do a quick update on whether I am still bullish on Tesla and touch on some highlights from their recent Q2 earnings report. There were a lot of little golden nuggets of information we got here. And while there was, you know, mixed sentiment around this earnings report, whether it was good or not, you know, stock has definitely rallied since. And I think all things considered uh, that this was a fantastic quarter for them, despite, you know, all these challenges they face, like with the vid lockdowns in China, kind of makes it hard to pump out cars when your most productive factory is locked down you know for weeks and months at a time I think everything considered this was a great quarter and they're really positioned for a record-breaking second half to 2022 here so let's just jump right into it so despite everything all the challenges the shutdowns in Shanghai they were able to achieve an operating margin among the highest in the industry of 14.6 percent as a free cash flow of 621 million and ended the quarter with the highest vehicle production month in hit in their history so a very strong finish to the quarter, and I think that that is going to bleed into the rest of the year here. We've got Berlin and Austin continuing to ramp up. Berlin just hit a huge milestone, that 1,000 cars produced in a single week. Austin, we've got the first vehicles with the 4680 battery cells and structural battery packs being delivered to U.S. customers. I'm going to touch a little bit more on uh, the importance of the 4680 batteries and the structural packs later in the video because they, they did give some great insight into uh, the importance of it during the Q&A session. I thought this was a great sign as well the energy business which i've been talking about a lot that you know it's kind of been disappointing it hasn't been ramping up as quickly as you know would have hoped uh the past couple quarters and really a couple of years but a lot of that has been due to supply constraints which elon touched on in a recent interview basically saying you know they had to sacrifice um production of the battery storage because you know this segment also requires these semiconductors and chips that were you know in a supply crunch so they prioritized putting those chips in the vehicles because that's obviously the main driver of their business right now so energy business took a, a little hit but in q2 here they achieved higher volumes with stronger economics res, uh, record gross profit and we'll take a look at the numbers which are up pretty significantly and we've got fremont and shanghai achieving their highest ever production months and new factory growth and we're focused on a record-breaking second half of 2022 so you know they've reiterated that Tesla, they're shooting for this 50% compound annual growth rate in uh, vehicles delivered and that they could basically get there with Shanghai and uh, Fremont alone. So not even factoring in production from Berlin and Austin, they could basically hit, you know, 50% growth or get pretty darn close to it. So automotive revenues. So if we compare this, you know, obviously it was down, deliveries were down from Q1 because of all the lockdowns, but year over year, still incredible growth, you know, on pace that 50% target. If we compare Q2 2022 from 2021, they grew 43% uh, revenue, automotive revenue and automotive gross margin stayed really strong, all things considered, 20, just under 28%. In this environment with facing recession, with we got in record inflation numbers, 40 year highs, with the China lockdowns and simultaneously trying to ramp these two new gigafactories, the fact that they still got close to 20, uh, 30% um, automotive gross margin is incredible. And I think this number will bounce back in the second half of the year. It should definitely get back up there, hopefully over 30%. Again, total revenue, obviously, with those uh, delivery numbers year over year, up 42%. Operating margin, 14.6%. Again, among the highest in the industry. And they finished with over $18 billion in cash. So they've got plenty of cash, healthy balance sheet here to fund all of these future ambitions and the major pipeline that I really think we're just getting started here with this company. So we know the production numbers, they ended up delivering 254,695 vehicles. And it's interesting, you know, you look at obviously the bulk now is coming from Model 3 and Y. And Elon had said in a recent interview with the uh, Tesla Silicon Valley uh, Owners Club, that the, the S and the X are really making for sentimental value at this point. And while, you know, they probably are a higher profit margin uh, vehicle, obviously with the higher selling price, but at this point, you know, a good year, they're probably, uh, Elon projected, you know, 100,000 is probably where the S and X sales will cap out. So figure 100K a year of uh, S and X, and uh, we're going to get to the point where you've got three to four million Model 3 and Y. So a very small portion of the overall pie, but, you know, Model 3 and Y, Y especially, just continue to grow exponentially. You know, their production um limited they're not they're not demand limited so good problem to have and i think that that is a problem that will persist there should be no demand issue for at least the next couple of years and by that point i think that they'll be at the point 
where obviously the goal over the long term is to get the price of these vehicles down. They're not going to be going up forever. They're only going up to, you know, try and maintain the margins with the ever increasing inflation. But, you know, two years from now, if demand, let's say, were to start to hit a ceiling, I think they'll easily be able to decrease the price of the car and they'll have, you know, even greater efficiencies and um, economy of scale by that point. You know, hopefully we get Berlin and, and Austin, let's say two years from now are fully ramped. So the economy of scale will be there and they could, you know, maintain that same 30 percent profit margin with a lower selling price. And then obviously you're going to open up a whole new market um, of customers. So solar and storage deployed was up pretty significantly compared to the last couple quarters. And this is also their highest solar deployment in the last four years. So I think that this is a good sign, things to come. I think this segment of the business we're gonna really see pick up in the next few years. And you know, there's a possibility that this energy and storage segment of the business one day becomes bigger than the automobile segment of the business. Obviously, in addition to that, we've got so many other things in the pipe you know, Tesla insurance, full self-driving, obviously, the cyber truck, the semi truck. We just got some great news actually too. Uh, EV tax credit expansions and, you know, the Tesla semi truck will be eligible, I believe, for a $40,000 tax credit. So that's huge, you know, and Tesla's the only one who's making, going to be making electric semi trucks. No one else you know, has plans to get into that market and at a mass scale. Supercharger stations, they've got 3,971 with over 36,000 supercharger connectors. I think this is such a huge underappreciated um, competitive advantage. I mean, who else is going to build this out? This took years for Tesla to do. And we're already getting to the point where, you know, other car companies are going to be using Tesla's superchargers. Uh, so maybe they'll even get to the point where they can, you know, monetize that. I mean, either way, whether they kind of make money off it or not, it's just a huge advantage because it's going to cost other companies billions of dollars to make their own. Otherwise, they got to use Teslas. And if we get to production capacity here, you know, Model 3 and Y at, uh, at Shanghai, we're talking 750,000 production. And then California, if we add up all four models, we're talking 650,000 production. So that gets you to 1.4 million. So that basically gets you to the point of, you know, a 50% year over year growth from last year, just under 1 million cars delivered. So I think that's a great sign to see and obviously can only be um, bolstered by the ramping of Berlin and Texas here. Fremont factory, again, record number of vehicles in Q2. And again, these factories are just getting more um, optimized. They see further opportunity for improvements. And, you know, with that, it's going to become more efficiency, higher margins. So again, Shanghai ended the quarter with a record monthly production level, and they're continuing to make upgrades there. They're even going to get a second factory up and running there. So they're only going to continue to increase the production rate further there. Autopilot and full self-driving, which becoming a bit of an enigma you know you have elon making these statements like tesla's future whether it's worth a lot or worth nothing is all uh pegged on the success of full self-driving they did say again that they think that it's going to be solved by the end of this year which don't hold your breath on that but you know we're definitely seeing improvements it's moving in the right direction i think that they're way ahead of anyone else and i think it's going to get there eventually but uh we'll touch more on that later Hundred thousand beta testers in the u.s so far and i believe in the q a that they mentioned that they plan to roll this out to everyone in the u.s by the end of the year so obviously with more data it will only help you know improve this uh, full self-driving more quickly vehicle software just continues to improve with these over-the-air updates and this is really interesting they're able to use the vision that the cars have to basically increase uh, the safety of the cars even more. They're already the safest cars. But with the vision, they're now able to see if a crash is imminent, that the seatbelt will automatically start to tighten, whereas historically, this, that's not going to happen until the impact. But now it can kind of preemptively tighten the seatbelt so it, it's safer. So in the event of a, a crash here, the, the seatbelt tightening as well as the airbag deployment will be optimized for, you know, exactly what's needed. And it's just an example of, you know, these cars just keep getting better over the air software updates, not a new model, not 2022 Teslas and on, all the models that can get a software update. So, you know, these are just the little innovations that are just gonna, they're gonna keep happening and I don't see how the competition can catch up. I just don't see the competition catching up in the next couple years, if ever, when they just keep rolling out these new features. So the cars keep getting better, but that's not the end of it. The manufacturing process continues to improve. The robot count in body shops and the new factories dropped by over 70% per unit of capacity compared to our first iteration of the Model 3 body shop. Our quest for simplification is not over. We will continue to drive simplification further with every new product and every new factory. So it's been said, you know, when you're investing in Tesla, you're really investing in the Gigafactory. And they continue to harp on, you know, they mentioned in the Q&A again, 
Tesla will be known as for its manufacturing capability. That's going to be Tesla's strongest competitive advantage. And again, you just go back to the simplification. What is this going to do? Higher profits, higher efficiency, more, more effective factories. So maybe that means Tesla with four gigafactories can do what another company needs 10 factories to do. These are just the small, you know, seemingly small things that they're just building all these blocks, building a huge house, a huge moat of, of competitive advantages and efficiencies that, again, it's just getting better with every new factory they build is better than the last. And they just continue to improve all aspects of, you know, not only the vehicles, but the production process. There's so much to be excited for here. Can you tell yet if I'm bullish on this company? <laughs> so again, solar deployments increased 25% year over year. Which I think is a great sign to see. And again, I think this is all comes down to those semiconductor shortages. As soon as that is resolved, you know, solar is really going to take off and you know be a nice complement to the automotive business. So again, reiterating over a multi-year time horizon, they're expecting 50% average annual growth in vehicle deliveries. I think that with a strong, you know, obviously we look at the numbers for the first half here. I think they're only at around 570,000. Here you can see. Q1, 2022, 310,000 deliveries, 254,000 Q2. So we're talking about 560,000 deliveries so far. So to hit that 50% growth rate this year, they're going to have to produce, you know, around an average of 400,000 vehicles in Q3 and again in Q4. I think that they really can do it, you know, barring no more uh, COVID lockdowns in Shanghai, um, obviously Berlin and, and Texas. Uh, production is just continuing to improve and increase. So if there's no more lockdowns, I think that they will hit that 50% uh, growth rate this year. And even if they don't, they're going to hit it, um, you know, cumulatively over the next few years as they've, as they've, uh, uh, you know, that's the target. While we continue to execute on innovations to reduce the cost of manufacturing and operations, over time we expect our hardware-related profits to be accompanied with an acceleration of software-related products. So our profits. So Tesla has said, you know, in previous earnings calls, Tesla is going to be become as synonymous with robotics and artificial intelligence as it is with electric vehicles. So it makes sense. There's a lot of software to come and the software is a great business, obviously, because it has high profit margins. So a new company, let's say Tesla is a great manufacturing company, maybe the best manufacturing company. Plus they get those high software margins. I mean, I, there's just no end in sight for the growth with this company. Gigafactory Texas, they spelled out Tesla with solar panels. Awesome stuff. <laughs> and, you know, again, just these, these factories are already so efficient and they're just getting better. The amount of robotics they employ, you know, requires less of a workforce. They've got the, uh, the Giga Press, which is, you know, creating the body of these cars now, making into two pieces what historically has taken hundreds of pieces to build. You know, the optimization is just continuing to improve. And with that, you're going to get higher profit margins. And you're going to produce more cars more effectively, quicker. So again, to sum up some of the big wins and then some interesting stuff from the Q&A session, Berlin hit it. That's a great milestone. A thousand vehicles produced in a week. You know, the ramp up continues. It'll take some more time to get fully ramped, but it's getting there. Austin, we're getting a glimpse of 4680 cells and structural battery packs. First ones delivered to U.S. customers. The energy business made meaningful progress and, you know, they said they're positioned for a record breaking second half of the year. I think the second half of this year is going to be a very strong second half, the strongest ever for Tesla. Iterating on the manufacturing, it's going to be their strongest competitive advantage. Uh, you know, I've talked about this so much already. It's just getting better and they're already so efficient at it, right? Elon also mentioned that uh, AI day is coming in the next couple months, I think probably September. People are going to be amazed, he said by what Tesla is able to show off at AI Day. And there's a tremendous amount of things to look forward to in the second half of the year. So don't take it from me, take it from Elon. Again, record gross profit for the energy business and higher solar volumes of the highest solar volumes uh, of the past few years. And then they got some interesting questions on you know, inflation. When is the average sale price gonna come down for Tesla vehicles? Elon had said when inflation comes down and he predicts that inflation is gonna start to come down at this, the, by the end of this year. So maybe Q4 of this year, we start to see some improvement. And then with that, you'd start to see the Tesla vehicle prices coming down, which hopefully will put some of the naysayers to rest who are saying, you know, Tesla's price like a luxury automaker, their prices are going up, people aren't gonna be able to afford them. But we know the trend and the goal long term is for them to decrease those prices. And I think once inflation is under control, they're going to, obviously. Now, as far as the structural pack innovation, the 4680 battery cells, this is really interesting. The whole idea is to make it work how, you know, airplanes, their wings double as wings. 
and fuel storage, right? They're multi-use. The structural pack innovations that Tesla's working on with the 4680 battery cells are going to become unequivocally better than cars uh, carrying battery packs as if they were cargo, which is kind of what we have right now. You know, it makes it more dual use. It'll be, it'll make the car lighter, more efficient. You know, this is much better than carrying around the batteries as if it were a sack of potatoes. You know, it's going to have a dual use and uh, this will help everything with the car. You know, it'll, that'll help you with range. That'll help you with battery efficiency. Uh, lighter car, obviously, you're going to be able to get further on less of a charge. And on to full self-driving. They're on pace to solve it this year. Again, don't hold your breath on that one. I do think they're going to get there eventually, but... You know, getting there and getting through the regulatory environment, I think, is going to take a few years at least, like probably more, before we're at least before we see something like a truly, you know, monetizable autonomous robo taxi fleet. Um, and then just to end on a final bullish note here, Kimball Musk just executed an option to buy 25,000 Tesla shares, and he replied, Tesla is just getting started. I can't wait for the next decade of awesome for my brother and his amazing team. So if you need some insight on if this is a good time to buy Tesla, on if Tesla is undervalued, look no further. Speaking of monetization, the YouTube channel, I want to thank you all, has officially gotten monetized here. So I haven't been posting much. Uh, I went on vacation right after I got the monetization. So I haven't posted anything. This will be my first video. Uh, post monetization very excited I want to thank you all for your continued to support and this is just the beginning of the investment club so if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe drop me a comment below if you have any questions this is Vinny from the investment club and I'll see you next time